Hey Autel Nation, welcome back to the channel. Now, before we begin, I want to ask you guys a question and get your participation. All right. Have you been in a situation where you're using your scan tool and you're trying to do a routine procedure and it doesn't work? It just doesn't work. And what makes things worse is you don't understand why it doesn't work. There's no logical explanation to come to a conclusion. Okay. Feel free to share your, your experiences when this happened to you in the, in the comments below. And what you're going to find is a lot of people have this problem. Now, from doing years of consulting, um, what I've observed is when you do have these situations, there's no easy outlet or resource that could take you by the hand and, you know, walk you through a framework to come to an end conclusion. All right. A lot of people, um, you know, I, I could see they, they, they get these problems and they're never, ever going to know why it's not working. Okay. So what I want to do is this happened to my client who was trying to do an ATIS calibration. And I want to show you what I did to help him come to a conclusion and get him the result he was looking for. Okay. So with that being said, Today, I'm going to show you a case study on a U023A front recognition camera no response on a 2018 Toyota RAV4. All right. And for those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'll be your presenter in this uh, presentation and I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. So in a nutshell, what I do is I help people by aligning them with the right scan tool and tool strategy and I'll render the results and services and training that you're going to see in this presentation okay so if you guys want to get into ATIS or you need a tool strategy feel free to book a consultation with me all right now by the end of this presentation this is what you're going to be learning you're going to see what tools are required to do this presentation you're going to um, see some important terms um, also and you're going to see the location of the front recognition camera and what I uh, process I did to diagnose this U0238 error code. And lastly, how to calibrate the front recognition camera with the MS909. Okay. So just to give you a quick uh, background on the situation. So the client replaced a windscreen uh, and he needed to do a front camera calibration. Now he attempted to do this procedure with the MS909 and failed. And what made things worse was he spent three hours trying to configure this module. He couldn't figure it out. Okay. And his client needed to pick up the car that same day. All right. So the pressure was on. So, um, just to give you the, uh, tools that he was using, uh, he was using the MS 909. Uh, he has the MA 600 mobile calibration kit. Okay and the Toyota Tech Info OEM repair information. Okay. So some terminology guys. All right. When you're getting into ATIS, this is your fundamentals. Okay. Static calibration. A static calibration is done in a specific environment with targets placed in front and around the vehicle or around the vehicle rather. Okay. And a scanner is used, um, to do these calibrations in conjunction with the targets. Okay. The next important term is uh, dynamic calibration. A dynamic calibration is done when you drive the car for a set distance and speed on the road. So sometimes you're going to use the scan tool to initialize this feature. Other times you may not, you can, you know, just click a couple buttons or, or on, on the uh, dash and um, just follow the OEM instructions. Okay. And what we're going to be uh, utilizing what the, what the client replaced was this right here, the front recognition camera. So in a nutshell, the front recognition camera is used to detect lane markers, lights, vehicles, pedestrians, traffic signs, etc. And once it gathers that data, it is then sent to other systems that also utilize the recognition camera, such as the, the, the dynamic radar cruise control system, the pre-collision system, lane departure alert system, automatic high beam system. Okay. So step number one is 
to scan for underlying conditions, okay? That's the first thing I'm looking for. So here's the initial scan, and you can see here with this topology view, we have the PCS2 module that has an error code on it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop on to the list view and determine what this means. So the PCS2 is a pre-collision 2 module, and you can see here, it says lost communication with image processing module. So based on that uh, terminology that I just shared with you guys, um, that is gonna be the front uh, camera recognition module that they're uh, talking about, okay? So I said, okay, if that's the case, let me go ahead and see if we're able to get some sort of um, communication with this module, all right? What I did was I scrolled down and I'm looking for that particular module and I'm just gonna see what the status of it was. All right, so let's see. Front recognition camera. This system controls the camera, da 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 da. All right, and we have no communication, okay? So at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I'm asking him questions. Um, how severe was the accident? Did you guys use original OEM uh, cameras that when you replaced it? Just to get some feedback. Um, and then what I did was I asked him, hey, do you have repair information? And he said, no, I don't. And I'm like, look, you're about to make 300 bucks doing this. You need to know what the manufacturer says in terms of you know uh, doing this calibration. And you also need to know um, the instructions on how to diagnose this U023A, okay? So that's what I did. I, I bought him uh, a subscription. I think it's like 20, 20 bucks for a couple days to research the U023A error code, all right? And if you can see here, um, there's a DTC number, lost communication with front camera module. There's no communication from the front forward recognition camera. And then you can see that there's three um, areas of concern, all right? There's the power source or inside forward recognition camera. And I eliminated this one out just because uh, after you know, questioning the client, I didn't see any major, uh, you know, electrical issues with the car. Um, it just seemed like a routine, you know, windscreen replacement, you know? And then the other one was the Ford recognition camera can main wire or connector. And then lastly, the Ford recognition camera. Now, I eliminated the Ford recognition camera as an option because they bought it from the OEM and there's a, it, I don't think that's going to be defective, okay? So I thought it was this one in the middle, Ford recognition camera, can main wire or connector. A lot of times, you guys, when the body shop puts stuff back on and so forth, they don't plug the things in um, and put it back together correctly sometimes, okay? So I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to that module, uh, examine it, and let's see what we find. And he looked at it and it wasn't plugged in all the way. It wasn't plugged in properly. So he put that back in all together. And my next goal was to see if that would rectify the communication issue. Okay, so I did an, uh, an auto scan on all the modules to see if we were able to establish a different result. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click fault scan here. And... Uh, Let's just keep an eye on this PCS2 module um, to see if this will be green. <laughs> All right, and there you go. We have established communication. All right, now, for those of you who don't know, this doesn't mean the, the job is done. When you're dealing with ADIS, you guys, um, just because there's no error codes, does not indicate that your problem is solved. Those, those things always need to be uh, calibrated, okay? So, so we're, we're still you know, in the war right now. All right, so what I'm doing now is um, I wanted to go ahead and check the status of the front recognition camera. 
um, just to see if uh, that's fine. So you can see here the pre-collision too, that's fine. And then I'm going to look just to see if the front recognition camera was communicating, okay? And you can see that right here. We, we, we have established communication, okay? So um, I'm going to click OK. All right, so now my next goal is to do what the manufacturer said in terms of uh, performing the recognition camera target position memory uh, uh, calibration, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. That was on the lower left. All right. And just to keep in mind, you guys, the client, the, the MS909 has a dedicated um, ATIS app that kind of walks you through the ATIS calibration procedure. I took a different function route um, j just to get a, a different perspective, okay? And um, what you see here, um, uh, I'm having the client insert the digits and you're asking me, Kurt, where is he getting these, these digits? This is actually on the repair information, okay? You just literally look at those coordinates and we're gonna go ahead and pop that in here um, as you see that the client's doing now, okay? So we're gonna put those in there. I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit, you guys, just because you guys get the, uh, the idea, all right? It's not rocket science, it's ADIS calibration. All right, I'm gonna do, I tell people, man, if you can read and you got a finger, you can do this, okay? All right, we're almost done there. Put that in there. All right, put the distance. Okay, and then we're gonna click next. All right, and then our recognition camera target position memory is completed. Please perform recognition camera access adjust with ignition power switch on, engine off, okay? So I'm gonna click escape, and that's gonna be my next step, perform recognition camera access adjust, okay? And you'll see that right here, recognition camera access adjust. All right, we're gonna go ahead and enter that, and we're gonna follow the instructions. Okay, raise the accuracy of the camera, blah, 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 blah. All right, we're gonna click okay. Establishing vehicle communication. All right, this function serves to adjust the recognition camera access. All right. Okay, so there's the data. All right, we need to get this rectified. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. All right, confirm the conditions below. All right, and once those are, are met, we're gonna click next. So select the type of recognition camera access system. All right. Um, I remember at this point, the client was asking me which one, so I just told him to just, just to read the OEM documentation and see what they said. So right now, he's literally going through that procedure, and he's seen this. All right, so he selected that one, all right, and I did confirm that was, because I actually have the documentation as well. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. Okay. Set up the target at position one. Okay. So as I said before, the ATIS app on the Autel will have this laid out for you beautifully. But what I did was, as I said, I, I took a different procedure and it says set up the target at position two as instructed in the related documentation. So the documentation is, is literally on the manufacturer's uh, uh, OEM repair information. It, it shows you exactly how it's set up and we just render that with the Autel uh, ATIS kit, okay? So he's doing that. And then once that's done, he's gonna go ahead and click uh, next. And you know, we have a specified time frame that we need to do this. Now adjusting, please wait. All right, and then he's gonna go set up at target position three. All right, so he's go ahead and doing that. And then after he's done with that, he's going to click next. All right, now adjusting, please wait. All right, recognition camera 
access adjust is completed okay so at this point i advise him to you know read and erase any codes and then take the car for a, a test drive and i did confirm that that fixed the issue okay so that's it um some things to remember you guys if the calibration doesn't go through try to check for any underlying conditions okay and what will assist you is utilizing the OEM repair information, okay? It not only tells you the uh, calibration procedure, okay? But if you do run into an error code, it will show you step-by-step -step on how to diagnose it, okay? And then third, after you do these procedures, okay, it's good to test drive the vehicle and uh, see if those Hey, these calibrations are working properly. All right, and then lastly, if you spend more than one hour trying to troubleshoot, seek assistance as a problem may be beyond your understanding, okay? And that's what I'm saying. When you're getting into ADIS, you guys, you need to think about if the person that you are buying the tool from is able to help you in these type of situations. You spend a lot of money and you don't have a lot of time to be figuring things out yourself okay so just remember that if you do decide to uh, jump into ADIS calibrations all right that supports really necessary okay so with that being said you guys i really hope you enjoyed this presentation and you know hopefully this will get you inspired to do this i can tell you i have a testimonial one of my clients who was working for someone doing the calibrations in-house has now uh, actually started his own ADIS calibration uh, business, got his own truck, got the, the targets, and uh, that makes me feel good, you know, um, you know, helping people make that transformation. So if this is you and you want to you have a different career change, ADIS is the way to go. So go to my website and uh, with that, guys, you have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you later. Bye.